We are live, and welcome back, guys. Hey, it's uh, been a while. It's July, uh, I believe, July 10th right now, and it's it's good to do another live stream today. So um, we're on episode 12. This episode is a special one because I uh, want to explain what I've been doing in the last month um, uh, while I had some downtime. Um, it was kind of a, a huge undertaking, so... Um, as you, you will see here on my end, let me just show you, make sure that you're on my screen. Um, I actually ended up converting my older template, which was all VSD tracks. Um, I don't really have any to show, but as, uh, if you're familiar with Cubase, there's a way to do VST tracks. And that was working for me for a while. And then um, lately it's been kind of bogging down uh, for certain times when I save. So I actually ended up uh, going with VN Ensemble Pro again. Uh, this is my second time around, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> second time around in, in terms of uh, getting a template to where I like it. And there's a lot of trade-offs between each other. I, I like the old system, but uh, after thinking about it, there's a lot of sustainability issues. And um, I want to explain why I went with the Ensemble Pro again. Um, again, uh, I used it before. And then after a while, I was like, okay, maybe my computer can handle it the other way, which it, it could for the most part. Um, but however, uh, a few talking points. If you are uh, thinking of long-term uh, sustainability, I think this is a better route because um, your save times are much smaller, um, and also the this is all related to the session file size. So um, this file is called what uh, CL012 for the composing live episode 12 heroic, and then uh, when you look at the file, it's probably like 50 megabytes, uh, whereas in uh, if you were to just natively do everything centralized inside of Cubase, it would be like um, maybe 200 megabytes or um, I think right now I'm at like almost 500 each time. So that's why my save times are so long. Um, and I'm thinking long term, um, looking at other composers, rigs and studios. Sometimes um, they have up to 2000, 3000 tracks. Um, with all just instrument tracks, and that can go up to about a gigabyte. So imagine you have like 10 different versions of this file. That's like 10 gigabytes in just one session. And imagine, you know, scaling that uh, to a year's worth or, you know, five years worth down the road. Um, the storage space uh, will drastically get uh, or actually, I would say exponentially get worse and worse. Um, and so I was thinking about it long term. It's much easier to decentralize your VST instruments from the host or se the sequencer. So in this case, I'm using VN Ensemble Pro. Um, I'll switch screens here so you can see how this works. Okay, so first off, um, I have two instances. You have the woodwinds, strings, plux, choir, and then the other side is brass, perk, keys, and synths. So if, if you'd like to get some ideas on how to arrange this, um, if you're uh, looking into Beyond Ensemble Pro, uh, please take notes and happy to answer any questions you guys may have while we're live today. So the first off, um, thanks for everyone that, who's here. Smith, Nassar, hey, hey man, it's good to see you. Um, anyone else, uh, if you guys uh, have anything to ask or just a shout out, uh, feel free to do so. Okay, so the woodwinds, strings, uh, everything here as you can see is disabled and also on my other side. So um, a big thanks to Guy Roland uh, on his YouTube channel for explaining how to get uh, automation set up because um, I wouldn't have done this without his uh, suggestion. And maybe you guys know how to do so already, but this was an eye-opening experience for me. So for instance, um, I'm just going to go to a random track, so um, let me switch sides here so you can see. So right now I have everything disabled on this side as well. So if I wanted to, let's say, open up my uh, brass ensemble patch, I do this and then I just press this key down here. It's uh, I have it uh, set up for CC19 and all of a sudden um, CC19, let me just go back to the other screen. 
And if you can see over here, uh, that just turned on. So this is something that's automatable uh, using this window. I'm gonna get out of this. So um, again, I'm gonna press the disable button on my uh, tablet faders and then it, it disables and turn it back on. So it's a two-step process, um, if that makes sense. So going back here, I have to enable this. I mean, I could just enable all the tracks uh, in a way, but I think this is a cleaner look and I, that way I can do this and do like high disabled tracks. But anyway, so, so I have that, right? And then I can uh, enable a track. As you can see, it's playing. My faders are working. Um, if I want key switches, I have this tablet to do key switches with. Um, I have uh, also, if in case you're wondering about routing, um, I do have this as well. So I'll have my fader uh, handy every now and then. So um, on the mixer window, let's find the brass, shall we? So right here, Ensemble Brass, um, I, I do have some uh, some um, reverb going through that, so let me just make sure I'm selected on there first. And you can see. Right, and everything's routed down here through uh, my group, so I have, you know, something very um, basic. You just have some woodwinds, brass, strings, keys, so yeah, take note of that if you want some ideas on how to uh, group everything as well. So um, anyways, I thought that would be really fun to show you guys. It's, uh, it's something that, again, is just huge undertaking and it was a pain in the butt. Um, I probably spent uh, countless of hours on this. Just anytime I, I could get my hands on, you know, like at late nights and things like that. So uh, it's pretty much done. Just got to add some damage to uh, stuff for my hybrid section. Um, yeah, so uh, I talked about the smaller footprint. I also think it's important to talk about uh, the fast save times. And this, again, is related to your smaller uh, hard space uh, or hard drive space that uh, will uh, inevitably ha happen because of that. Um, the more tracks you put on, so like if if you're working with a lot of orchestral stuff, um, it it really sucks. If you're doing only like five to ten tracks of VST instruments, then just doing it natively inside of Cubase, like you know, for instance, I have some down here like this one. As you can see, uh, this is uh, just an instrument track. And you know you can have everything loaded as instrument tracks um, if it's small. But the the bigger uh, your temp, your uh, bigger the tracks are enabled, and the more you're using, the longer the save times are. I have my save time set to like 15 minutes, and so um, every 15 minutes I have to wait like two minutes sometimes for it to save and create you know like the refreshed uh, save fi uh, file for that. So again, uh, that's really important. Um, for your creativity, it's nice to be able to move faster that way. And then the third reason is you can go in and out between sessions. Um, I think that is something that's highly understated. And so, um, um, meaning if I have, let's say, a, a film score that I have to, uh, to uh, score and there's like 20 cues, I can go in and out using a, a similar template each time and then using the same uh, VN Ensemble sounds on this window over here. I just have to remember to disable all the tracks and enable the ones that I use. And so there's uh, quick ways to go about that. Um, again, another shout out to Guy Roland. But um, for instance, over here, let's say I unmute this track, as you can see here. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a little ticker on CC19 um, with a uh, value of one unit there. And that will actually turn on any track. So I can just uh, disable or uh, actually enable these, um, these events or uh, unmute them, I should say. Press play. It'll um, enable those tracks on VN Ensemble's end. So anyways... That is uh, a lot of fun uh, to to show, and again, is a, a lot of a lot of work, a lot of thinking. 
Um, if you ever need to organize something, I, I, I highly suggest you to write it down. So like over here, um, if you can see, I have like a whole list of my outputs and where they go, including the port numbers, because um, you know there's like 48 ports for every uh, instance instead of the N Ensemble Pro. So again, uh, I have all of that. Now, um, that's all my orchestral stuff. I decided if I do synths, which there's you know probably like a ratio of five to one synths uh, to the orchestral instruments I have, I just decided to use synths native or uh, centralized inside of uh, Cubase, if that makes sense. So yeah, it's a little bit of a hybrid and it, it works out pretty well. Um, I should um, just test this out. Before I actually compose something, I wanted to also uh, showcase something on my end here. Um, and let me just open up something that I converted from a previous track. And then we'll, we'll play that. It's not um, mixed or anything, but um, that way let's kind of rev this engine up and get this going and we'll see how it sounds together. Okay, and the load time, as you can see, you know, with all the routing, it does still take a little bit of time, but not nearly as much uh, with all these instruments if it was native. Now, um, so the first thing again is to uh, use, I can use those little uh, MIDI events on the other side, or I can just highlight everything, select all, and then press this green button. Now, if I do that, it's going to take a sec, but let's let's try it and see how fast it'll take. So right now it's uh, one uh, or 11, 11 a.m. at my time. So I'm just going to take note. Now it just turned eleven twelve, and um, let's give it a sec for that to load. Um, yeah. So if you guys have any questions? Let me know. Yep, and everything is still kind of loading, so as we speak, uh, that's all going on. And this is all in real time while streaming, so <laughs> it's a little bit of a, a load on the computers. Uh, one thing I thought would be fun to, to talk about is uh, decentralization. Uh, that that's, seems to be kind of the new trend right now, and uh, if you guys follow cryptocurrencies, there's a whole movement called DeFi, Decentralized Finance. Um, and I thought it would be fun to coin a term, DCOMP, uh, which would be <laughs> Decentralized Composing. So what does that mean? Uh, I just figured, well, if, if you're offloading your load times with um, everything, okay, that works, everything's loaded up. If you're, if you're just uh, loading everything from different computers, um, let's say you have more than two on your studio rig. Um, it really does help a lot. I mean, it, it can be a lot of work, a lot of uh, clunkiness, but anyways, decomp. Here we go, so let's try this. So you get the idea, something happened there, uh, a little funky. I'm not sure if it's because of um, the programming. Sometimes there's like sustain pedals that are that are programmed in and it kind of messes things up. So anyways, if I were to, uh, let's play back and see if that happens. Okay, 
so so it wasn't the it's something within um just the playback issue and i i hope to you know dial down more uh of those kind of bugs that happen throughout i'm not sure if that's a vienna thing um that that happens within cubase all the time anyways so Anyway, so that's uh, that was something I composed, I think, two episodes ago on, I believe, episode 10. So you guys, if you want to see how I wrote this track out, you can check that out. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and deactivate. Well, let me, yeah. Well, let's see. Yeah, I, I might as well just deactivate everything, and then I'll reactivate them as we go. So let's go ahead and do the same thing here. Um, I'll save this. So there you go, deactivate. Now that'll take, I don't know, another minute or so. Um, so yeah, th this kind of stuff, um, again, it's a trade-off. It's not perfect in that sense, but uh, in terms of scalability, um, I think this is the best option here. So um, I, I mean, I, I keep, acquiring new sample libraries every day, every month or every other month some um you know just a out of uh generosity of other sample libraries i um, am able to get them to test out for free which is a, a very um, um uh, high luxury but you know i also will buy a bunch of sample libraries uh, anytime I, I think it's it's uh, something that's worth getting or if it's a good investment. Uh, a lot of times it's on sale too. So um, if you guys are uh, interested in the libraries I work with, you know, uh, feel free to ask about that. I, most of the time they're going to be east-west stuff. Um, I have some orchestral tool stuff. I have some CineSample stuff. Um, also Jaeger, uh, by Audio Imperia is really awesome. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's just, there's so much out there and I'm sure you guys, uh, use something similar. Um, let's see here as this is deactivating, let's make sure that, okay. So everything deactivated now I can get out and go back to my main window. And as that's loading, um, we have Liz K Music. I've just jumped in. Is this a template for Cubase only? Thank you. Yes, it is a Cubase. Um, this is a, a Cubase and Vienna Ensemble Pro uh, template. So uh, if you can see over on this window, I have two instances. Uh, one side has those instruments here, woodwind, string, plugs, choir, and the other is brass, key, synths, um, and percussion. And so let's go ahead and go to this side. So today I'd like to write some heroic music, uh, something that uh, conveys a little bit of maybe the Olympics uh, as is uh, coming up soon. Um, and so that's going to be brass heavy. Um, so I'll use some brass samples um, and then I will see where it goes. And then, yeah, again, this is just to test out the template. So bear with me if I run into some routing issues, which inevitably happen. Uh, I ran into that earlier this week as well. Um, so what I like to do is start out with a sketch and the sketch kind of goes like this. I'll just play on the piano. Okay, so I have that and it goes. So then, so that's the idea. Um, you know, we'll orchestrate that in a way that sounds fun with the percussion, brass strings, woodwinds, all that stuff. So where to start? Um, I think it'd be fun to start with like a little zhroom, like a little whoosh or something in the beginning. So let's try that. Um, I'm going to uh, go ahead and 
get some bass going. Timpani. Hmm, which one? Hard or soft? Let's just do hard. And then some symbols. Um, what else here? We got some crashes. Maybe a crash too. So let's add that in. Um, and then let's go to my keyboards here. Let's add a chime. So let's. Oh, yeah. I have to turn all these on, by the way. So. Um, a quick way to do this is what I, I just enable the tracks on this side. Now what I'm going to do in order to turn them on is hide disable tracks. Go and I can just highlight all of these here. And I think I have to unclick these folders for it to work properly. So then enable that. And let's just test that out make sure all those instruments work. I, I could add piano, although it might just, I'll just keep maybe this um, giant piano as a sketch and get rid of that as well. So you got this. All right, and Jazz Dude, hello for Germany. Hello, Jazz. Yeah, and Liz, um, being a Dorco Pro user, I would lo have loved to test Cubase, but it can be only installed on C, which is so weird in the 21st century. I will stick with Ableton. Oh, thank you. Um, you love my compositions. Hey, I, I'm, I'm glad uh, someone's listening to it. <laughs> um, yeah, so when you say installed on C, do you mean C drive? Um, I'm, I'm curious about that too. Okay, so I got the sounds. Okay. Okay, so that, that's my whoosh I'm going to start with. Okay, yeah, so Liz K, um, to go uh, um, back to your your um, mention here about the C drive. Um, yeah, if that if, if you can't install it on C drive or you, you want to, yeah, I don't think there's a way around that, honestly. Um, and, and I guess Ableton is able to. That's cool. Um, Ableton's a great program. I actually started on uh, Ableton and Fruity Loops um, before I switched over. So yeah, it's a great program. Okay, so let's try this uh, whoosh sound. I'll start on the downbeat right there. Let's start with the... Something like that. We're going 120 beats per minute, that's okay. Okay, so you know what? I'm just gonna go one measure before that as well. Okay, downbeat on bar one. Maybe it's too long. I'll, maybe I'll do two beats instead. Let's see. Yeah, okay, here we go. Two, three, four, one, two. Good. All right, and then I might have to lengthen that. All right, and then timpani, same idea. Um, this one I have to put a key switch on. Um, sometimes the key switches don't happen. Yep, so I have to put it back in there. All right, so let's see. All right, and then go back. Okay, and we're in the key of B flat, so F. Yes. All right. Do I have, let's see. I don't think I have um, Tiffany Roll, do I? I should probably make one just for that because it's nice to be able to switch um, or just have them separated out. Okay, let's try this. I'll do a roll first. So I got the roll. Um, it's starting a little early, and that might be uh, actually better uh, than starting on downbeat. So let's keep that there. And then I'm gonna do a B flat, change that to a sus note. Okay. 
Um, let's see here. Then I have all these guys. Okay, I'm good. All right, let's keep going. Let's try that. Uh, let's go back there. One, two. Yeah, th this first key works really well with half notes. Um, maybe I'll extend it out even more just to, so there's some more tail that in, in case it cuts off early. Okay, and then um, I could do a crash too. Which of these crashes? Try this one. It almost sounds like it's in B flat. <laughs> okay, hold that out. Well, actually, is this a one shot? Oh, it is. Okay, so this one here, I can just chop. Oops. Um. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then a uh, little chime. Let me see what else I have. I have some church bells. Let's hear how this sounds. I'll have to enable. So um, for those who just came in, welcome, by the way. I am testing out my new template by writing some fresh music. It's a heroic style music. And um, I'm so uh, what I should say is if you missed the first part, when I enable a track, I, it's a two-step process since these are just MIDI tracks. Um, I have this little button that I created, CC19, and I have it on both of my fader boards, and then that way, you know, in case one breaks down or whatever, I can, I still have another button to press. But yeah, it's a two-step process. Um, so that part is, uh, it can be a little annoying, but I, I'm getting used to it, and I feel like it's it's worth the trade-off here. So, um, I thought it'd be nice to uh, just test out other bells I have. I don't really have any other ones besides those two, and this one isn't pitched, but let's see how this sounds. still loading I think maybe not let's, let's double check so I have um, it's under my keys okay there we go so, so something in the routing just uh, is off here oh I see it's not even loaded so I'll show you my screen Right now, I, I, I thought I had the giant Buddha bell listed here. So let's go into my metals. Giant Buddha bell. Okay, <laughs> there we go. Now that should work. Um, something's kind of funky. Normally, oh, okay, there we go. That might be pitched a little too low. So, okay, let's go back to the other screen. So yeah, I have the option of right here or, or that or something like that. So I, I kind of like this one. I mean, it sounds a little synthy to me. Um, if you guys agree on that or not, let's see. One, two, three. Let's see how that would sound with um, that layered on top. That's kind of cool too. So anyways, um, it's fun to play around with sounds. Let's extend this baby out. Okay. So, hmm. Another idea I have. 
since I don't have a low B flat on the chime, uh, like an octave, I do have a C. I could um, pitch it down. Let's see. Uh, yeah, so the pitch bend only can go so far. Um, but that's an option. I, I could do that. Um, but let's see again. Yeah, um, maybe I'll, I'll keep that for now. And then here, let's just uh, bring this down a little bit. So let's go like that. Okay, it's still kind of loud. Um, okay, and then I think the other chime is fine. Okay, and then what other percussion do I want? Um, probably some snare. Um, so let's add some snare in there. Snare. Let's do a calf head, Jaeger snare. Um, I'll, I'll do with. Um, I'll, I'll just stick with the east west stuff for now. Okay, I'll turn that on. And maybe a cha cha cha. If it's loaded. All right, another routing <laughs> routing failure. Let's try. Uh, what is wrong here this time? Here, so you can see what I'm seeing. Yeah, so I got this done maybe uh, in in the course of like two months, and it's um it's been it's quite a task here. So. I have this routed on port 20. Okay, and let's see why that isn't working. So port 20, MIDI port two. So my on off button probably isn't working. So let me just double check on this real quick. Uh, ooh, let's see, MIDI port 20. Oh, I see why. So I need to uh, get these over to EWO snare drum. So I made a mistake on that. And this one too, snare. EWO. I hope uh, what you see makes sense in terms of uh, the routing situation. I see, okay, I see what happened. So all of these need to be changed to the snare. Okay, so now if I press the off button on button, it, it should work. All right. I'm glad to be able to do this uh, while I'm composing live, just to kind of show you the ropes of how this works. Uh, back to the main screen. Okay. Okay, let's add that in. Um, Maybe that or hmm. let's do a snare roll. Okay. One, two. Right. So we're just building and building, um, getting that going here. Okay. Next, let's do some um, brass. I'm just gonna do it all on the full brass for now, and then. I can change that over if needed. Uh, probably um, is what I'll do. But let's see. Let's move this over. Okay. Oh. Okay. So here's what I'm thinking. Dun da da. Zoom. Dun, 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 dun. Well, you know what? Maybe I'll give it some breath. So, two, three. That's really loud in the beginning, I didn't realize. So, let's see, if I, 
I was thinking about starting it right on one with the brass, but I'm, it might be too loud, so. Hmm. We'll keep that in. Maybe I'll start on beat three. Or beat, beat two. Dun, dun, dun. Let's go a little slower. All right, let's see if this works. One, two, one, two, three, four. Yeah, da -da -dun, da -da -dun. so it has to be a lot slower like that, more grandioso in the beginning. Um, Let's see, let me, let me play that back so I can see what is happening here. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, another thing that I find uh, a, down, a trade off downside is the latency. And I thought I fixed that. It seems to be adding more latency because of all this other junk, like the ASIO stuff I added. Uh, so that, that that's a drag. Um, one thing I think works, but um, and, I, and this is a side tangent, but I, I just want to uh, try to fix this before going on. So um, if you look at all this stuff here, this latency, all those numbers, I think there's a way to mitigate the... Um, latency when you record it in by shifting the samples. So if I go 21.771 plus 22.958 plus the ASI O guard like that, okay, and then you times that um, because it's through VN Ensemble, you times it by two, I believe. Okay, so that those are the milliseconds delayed, I believe. And then if I want to convert the samples, times that by 48. And that's 8,390 samples. So that over here, let's go 8,390. Let's see if that um, let's see if that fixes it. So I'm just gonna do another version of that and uh, record it again and see if those samples are set on the right place this time. Again, let me start here. Two, three. Okay, and did that do anything? I don't think so. Uh, um, I mean, I I could just be playing early, but uh, that is um something that I didn't really have to deal with last time. Um, Windows native, so that's a trade-off. Uh, that that's a big downside, maybe through being an ensemble with the latency. Um, you could always just like record and then shift it over just a bit slightly, like that. Anyways, let's see which one sounds better. This version. This one sounds kind of weaker on the second half, whereas the second version here uh, sounds strong. Uh, there is a breath I need to add somewhere here, though. So, um, right here. And as you can see, everything here is so loud already. Um, let's see. Maybe if I just bring that down a little bit. I get a little bit of travel room. So, okay. Now it's quiet, right? So let me go and boost this. And these are little tweaks I'm going to be doing throughout 
So my Jaeger full brass and probably all the uh, brass stuff, which is um, this. This is a trumpet, I believe. So I'm gonna boost this guy up. So over here on this screen, you can see it's at zero. I'm just gonna boost the the fader to like. I uh, might as well just do six. Let's just do six. Come back here. All right, on this end, um, we have. Okay, and then that way this is somewhat quieter. Bring that down a little more so there's more travel room. Okay, so let's just re record the expression. Just a little more. Nope. Sorry, the um, bells and stuff are loud, so I'm going to solo this. Two, three, four. Okay, right here, it needs a breath. And this uh, note slightly rushes, it's, it's okay, but I'm just gonna bring it down. Okay, that's better. And this can go up just a little bit. By the way, how's uh, the sound? Can you guys hear this all right? Is there any uh, sound issues you're coming up with? If, if so, just let me know. Uh, I'll, I'll try to tackle those little tech issues as we go here. Okay, all right. Um, so there's that. Uh, because this is a brass, like a full brass ensemble, it's more for sketching. So I'll move this over to trumpet and a bit. Um, let me just think about other things like something to support that. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to do solo trumpet here. All the way to that part and then um, on the second call response thing um, we'll add other things in here so okay dun, 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 dun. I might as well just copy this over so let's do this real quick oh let's try to go bring that back da, 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 da. And now on the second half, what do I have? Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Oops. Sixteenth note. Well, this isn't really sixteenth note, but that's what I have written down in my notes here. I'll change that to a F. Notice uh, nothing here is quantized too much, um, and uh, I like to keep it that way if possible. Maybe that breath. Maybe on this, uh, let's re-record that. So, um, whoops. Yeah. Just a little taper, right? Make that uh, sound more realistic. <laughs> and then, yeah, that looks good. 
Okay, and on the second half, dun, dun, dun. Um, let's think about what to add there. Hmm. Yeah, th this set is a little different than when I was uh, when I first ventured into it. That's okay. I, I I do like this better in a sense for now. Um, let's do more of a, a brass thing. So let's go here. Let's do um, some BBO or tuba. Let's add tubas. Which tuba though? Hmm. Let's try solo tuba. Let's do some horns. Um, I like the horns from Jaeger a lot. So let's do that. And as another option, we do Sonori. And then we have um, a solo horn would be cool too down the road. Okay, so I have that much. Let's activate those. All right, and let's see how fast these load. Five, four, three, two, one. Nope. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, look at that. Okay, so. Okay, so that's my first one. I might do a solo something. more of a chordal thing, so we're in B flat. Or Jaegers. Oh, change that to Sus. You hear the difference? Uh, yeah, so I'll keep it to the Jaeger for a sec. Okay, so that's the idea. Um, <laughs> I was thinking about what to actually put in. Dun, dun, dun. So the inverted B flat chords there. Sonori's. Uh, so Sonori has a better crossfade on the mod wheel here than Jaeger's. Ja Jaeger um, brass is great. It's actually more used for, uh, it's designed for the, the trailer stuff, so you know, it has a lot of buzzy sounds. But it's great for um, classical too, but Sonori has that nice warm tone and it's a little more flexible for this. So let's do that. And then Oh man, everything's uh, what do you call it? like augmented here? So I have to figure out how this works on my end. Maybe I'll change the chord. Write that in so I don't forget. So we have B flat. Um, 
Uh, yeah, right there. Okay, so. As you can see, hmm, that delay is going to be an issue. So I'll figure that delay stuff out. But um, in the meantime, we'll we'll just work with within here. This was kind of late. All right, and then do I like that second chord right there? Let's see. Da, da, da. Maybe go down. make sure that my sustain pedals are gone. As I've learned, you never want to put sustain pedal through your orchestral stuff. It, there, inevitably, there's always some mistake that happens, um, or not mistake, but just some programming, scripting issues. So I always get rid of them. Good. And the mod wheel here, like I could probably just draw that. Maybe I'll do a line tool. What is my line tool? I guess I don't have that programmed, so I'll have to key switch that. I've been using the line tool more. Uh, if you guys use it, um, it's pretty handy. You can do parabolas like this. Go, uh, troop. Just a little bit more. Maybe a little too much, so let's go back here. Bring that down. Yeah. Ah, so far sounding heroic, right? Um, let's try some other things. So um, I'm actually going to open up my trumpets now. So I got the Jaeger trumpets. I also have these East West, uh, the expanded library and opus with the uh, the trumpet two X. These sound great too. So let's open up both and have a listen. Of course, uh, the scripting right here is was designed more for the Jaeger. So let's just meet that for a sec. And let's solo brass. Okay, here, let's do legato. All right, and I'm not sure why that just turned off the sound. Um, let's see what happened. Trumpets are playing. Okay, something sounds muted. Oh, I know why. Ah, okay. Okay, and then, so this is where the programming uh, comes in. Now that I have different options, I can do like staccato. I wonder how portato would sound on that first note. Look out of that. OK, 
Okay. Dun -dun. That's uh. It's kind of uh, long. Okay, and then go here. Bring this down. Let's see if that. Maybe it's too both. <laughs> yes, it's a, a labor of love here, guys. Yeah. So there's some weird triggering happening. Um, if, if possible, legato is best, right? Okay, so there's that one. Let's just test the other one real quick and see how different they sound. Um, I might have to re-solo. Try that. key switch okay there we go so um, yeah there, there's some cool things happening on this one too huh? um, legato sustain Okay, and I might draw in something like this, dun, 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 like that. Um, there we go, that's better. This guy would have to do something like this. Just a little less, I think. All right. Okay. And then, yeah, so the programming, you have to always mess if you are uh, auditioning them for different libraries and sometimes you, you might get lucky and you don't have to okay. I think I'll do that for the first one too Um, I, I like the I like this one a little more it's like brighter sounds a little more heroic it could be also just because it's louder <laughs> so let's just make sure I have this style down okay yeah what else what else am I missing um, I'll bring the trumpet up a little bit on this end so I have a little more travel room so again, I'm on my Vienna side of the screen. Let's boost that up just a little more, get a little more juice, and then that way I can uh, do something like this, where I expand it out. Oop. Let's see. let's see how it sounds. Try um, uh, recording some mod with um, 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 um. Yeah. Sometimes I, I wish I can just export these out, like like these ones that tail out too long. Mm, should I do it? Let's do it. 
So make sure that you do the mix down to one audio file. So for, again, take note for any uh, Vian Ensemble potential users, or if you use uh, uh, Vian Ensemble already, um, make sure you click that. That way you, when you do a little render, it just does the chimes only, not all the channels, or else you get like 30 channels, uh, 30 of these tracks that are muted. Okay, and uh, they are, um, if you look over here on the top left, uh, they're labeled accordingly to your track. I like to just do this as well. I don't know if there's a way to fix that so you can put that name under here instead of stereo out. I'm not sure, but that would be nice. <laughs> Good, okay, so now I'm gonna mess with the mod wheel. Mm -mm. Let's try again. <laughs> A lot of bells, huh? Last note right here should probably be a staccato. Well, that's weird. It's doing some weird sound. Let's try a sustain. It could just because of this, too. Um, if I get rid of that instead. It's like a weird legato thing happening, huh? Hmm. Let me see. Maybe it's the second note, so um, it's doing like a um, transition there. So let's just do that. Yeah, okay. So switching back and forth, is it legato? Is it sustain? Yeah, it's just it depends. Uh, one more time. Good. All right. So we got that, right? Um, yeah. Now this opens up my sketching area a little more. Yeah. Uh, Maybe not starting like a syncopated thing. Let's try starting on the downbeat. And I'm thinking uh, trombone line now. Okay, cool, cool. Let's try again. Yeah, a lot of tweaking here. Um, well, that second note.
starting on the D. That's better. Okay, so what did I just do? I did D with that. Cool. So that'll be a trombone part. Um, and I could go open that up if I wanted to. Trombone. Trombone Yeager. Okay, open that guy, turn that on. So, we have that part. Let's make sure it sounds good. Uh, bring up these guys. So, oh, let's see. Okay. Okay. Let's just make sure routing is good. There was something funky about this last time. Oh yeah. So as you can see, I have my brass percussion MIDI port on four and my horns on six, um, or horn six on the same port. So meaning what I just played was probably the same patch and that's why you heard something funky there. So another routing failure. <laughs> Let's uh, make sure that I have the right stuff up. Okay, so um, going back to the screen, you can see uh, this, is MIDI port 4 and MIDI channel 4. So that's the Sonori horns. So I was just playing horns again. So um, horns and trombone, you know, depending on the range, they sound similar. This is actually port 5, MIDI channel 4. Okay, we figured out the issue. Let's go back here. Let's change this to port 5. And um, I'm going to have to make a note for myself. Just a side note here to fix that on my template. So um, Jaeger trombone fix. Okay, all right. Moving on, let's make sure whatever I have now sounds good. Okay, so. Okay, again, I need to bring this down. Let's let's think about woodwinds for a second. So we have something like this one. Let's turn that guy on, and then um, Hollywood stuff would be nice, just as a sketching idea. Oh yeah, let me turn these on, of course. And this one will take a sec. This one should be fast, so. Mm -mm. Nope, not yet. Okay, that is, should be working. And then my Hollywood combos, for some reason, didn't turn on. Oh, now it is. Okay, cool, cool. Going back here. Um, we have these are runs I think these are uh, nice uh, tools I kind of like this Something like that, but uh, let's let's play around with that. So dun dun dun. 
something. thing I need to get better at is uh, going back into these <coughs> uh, these little MIDI events and make sure since these are key switches it's really easy to get out of hand when you once you switch them out so I got to do it early on while I'm composing so um, you keep track of all the key switch stuff okay so we got that um, I, I put that in right there with a the tuba as a placeholder because I kind of like this trill thing happening. So maybe we can go to, um, I mean, I might just, I might as well just stay with this instead of orchestrating it all big uh, for the sake of time, mainly. But that's kind of cool, uh, being able to, like right there where the tuba hits and, and do this. Let's try that. Oh, I see. That's weird. It like switched back to sustain. So let's go to that guy. That's what I want. Okay. So I'll have to just program this in. Dun, 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 D. And then. Okay, let's record the uh, mod wheel stuff. You know what? Um, let me get rid of this count in stuff. Activate metronome. Uh, click during count in. Is that it? Or what am I missing? Right here. The count in. Get rid of that. Okay, let's go back here. Sorry, move that travel so it's up top instead. Something like that. Well, might as well do a whole thing. Okay. Oh, that's weird. It didn't cover everything it, it, or overwrite everything. Let's try it one more time. Yeah, that's better. It could be louder, though. Yeah, I like it for that note where the tubas come in. I don't know what to do after that. Let's. I could do another, or go higher because now we're in the um, G minor chord, and then here I could go to like something like that. Um, let's quantize these guys. That's doing a whole half note. Is that a trill or a tremolo? It sounds like a tremolo. Um, a trill, I mean. Oh, this is going higher. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I don't know if I like that so much. Um, maybe I can keep it on these two notes. Even then, I don't, eh, okay. Yeah, I think we're good there. So instead of doing trills, let's just do like a sustain after that. Okay. 
That's good. Quantize those. Wrong chord. Yeah, so uh, G, da da da, or da 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 Um, I could do it with this run, so how would that sound? Uh, where are my keys at? Let's go back here. Oh, so I have to do B flat. So it'll be that one. Huh, that'd be interesting. Um, and yeah, and then this is a little wonky, honestly, with the key switches, but. Okay, I'll, uh, this one too. I have to go like that. I think that should work. Yeah. It's not working though. That's why. It's on the wrong key. Three, four, one, two. And then sustain that. Let's do that. So F A. Let's solo that so you can hear it. Try again. Huh, there's a funky thing happening there. Um let's try it one more time. Three, four, one. Ah, so this isn't perfect. I might have to uh, divide up my Hollywood winds a little bit better uh, so that the the switching between is smoother. So that's one thing I'll, I'll have to think about. Oh, that sounds better. Maybe it was just this mod wheel stuff. Very nice. So now uh, we have this one idea. Let's add um, some percussion. Okay. work a little faster on the percussion stuff but Oops. Right around there. Okay, and then let's go. Okay. 
Good. Crash. Let's add a crash right there. This, this crash is different than this crash. <laughs> Sorry, I'm uh, editing as I'm playing, which probably happens uh, more often than not. Okay, good. So we got that now. I need to finish my little um, idea here. So the theme continues on. Da -da 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 -da. Um, maybe I will switch this out to strings. So let's see what I have for strings. Let's do a just a low high sketch. Hmm. Let's do the uh, Jaeger again. And then I have. Yeah, maybe we can trade the melody off of here to woodwind and strings. Yeah, maybe like a cello. Too fast, probably. Dun, 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 It's either that or da -da 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 -da. hmm. Seems kind of rushed, like kind of fast. Let's hear how that sounds. Uh, we aren't on. Or let's change that key. So, or not key, chord to E flat. Da -da. change that chord as well. So we have G minor. Right? Okay. Yeah, that sounds that sounds good. I feel like maybe here tempo wise it just needs a little bit slower tempo there. So 
why not just add it in? Um, let's go like 104, because we're at 110 right now. Okay, good. And then um, we're going to orchestrate this. So let's go here. I wonder if I should maybe do a horn solo. It's really high, huh? Um, what else would be good? Maybe a trump trombone solo. Uh, we could do some bells okay This one actually, sustain pedal works really well. So I'll keep the sustain pedal on and let's see how this sounds. All right. That's a sixteenth note. Yeah. Good. Um. All right. Uh, remind me if I forget that I will put a little chime also with the tuba there. Hey, Cinna Mahler, Cinna Mailer, Cinna Mahler. Hey, Cinna, Cinna Mailer reports. How's it going? Welcome. So we have, uh, so far what we have is this idea. It's probably uh, cello and maybe viola right there, so I will bring that down eventually. Um, but I still want to sketch some other ideas here because I need some low brass, uh, maybe woodwinds too. Okay, so I need a bassoon. I need. And it, you know, three bassoons might be better. This is like their new Opus uh, updated version of that. A little bit stronger. Let's see. this into
first notes rushing okay so let's go like that uh, legato that maybe just staccato on that one a solo oh interesting this one's kind of it needs to kind of start early So all of these notes right here. Bring that down. Ah, it's very interesting. Uh, the scripting for any note that's also um, uh, succeeding. Uh, so it's after a staccato note, I have to change to sustain, looks like. So, overlap. Little breath right there. Yeah. All right. Hey, Tom. How's it going, man? Thanks for coming on and hanging hanging today with me. Um, yeah, yeah, it's thanks. It, the the template is it's coming along. It's uh, I would say it's like ninety five percent there for now in terms of all the instruments I own and whatnot. So I'm pretty happy with that. Let's see here. Okay, let's try it. Oh, this is Russian. Okay. There's some fu something funky even on that transition, huh? It's like it's loud on the, hmm, like on, on that little smear between, kind of loud. Hmm. I don't know how to fix that. Is it the transition time? Could be the transition time. So like. It's not that actually. Hmm. That's just the patch itself. So maybe it's just rushing. No, it's still loud, huh? I think that helps. Yeah, we're, we're just gonna build, build, build. Um, and I think today, I only have time to really finish this like first uh, portion. So I'll, I'll, I might have to come back to this. I'm really looking forward to making this track. And I hope you guys are enjoying what I'm doing here. It's a lot of work doing these orchestral stuff. Um, but if you're patient enough, you can really build something that you're proud of at the end. Okay, so let's do some other things. So we'll keep Sonore going. So three, four. Yeah. Amen. Um. 
Should I do a E flat instead? I keep going back and forth on these chords here. Um, and I'll write it down over here eventually too. So we have. That sounds good to me. So. Yeah, uh, I have the E flat thing going there. Let me just double check my tuba. Oh, I don't even have anything there, do I? -na 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 -na. Okay, so nothing harmonizing great. Okay, so I got a fresh harmony going. Um, let's add that in. Oh, I didn't mean to record that. I just need to catch up on my stuff so uh, if you can see on the screen with the you know like the number that keeps changing here that means I'm close to where that dot is by moving my fader um, so I'll do that on both and that's good enough here we go. actually I forget where I'm at okay. Okay, so close. I actually pressed the other button there, but yeah, I just need to get this at a good pass. Let's take a nice good pass on this. I think I should just do that, like, like that. Okay, so here. What happened here? Oh, it recorded over, didn't it? Um, here's a, just a little cheat. I'm going to copy that. Go back to the undo. Copy over that. There we go. Okay. Um, get rid of my pedals. Okay, this should be good. Let's make sure I do it uh, one more time. All right, cool. I really like the sonori of horns there for this type of music. So this needs to extend out. Oh. Maybe too much. Um, let's see. Where am I at here? Oh. Um, do I need to quantize link? I think that's why. Okay. That's better, right there. I kind of like how there's like a extended note on that D. I don't know. I mean, it's like so subtle, but those little things make it sound more realistic. Okay, all right. 
moving on. Let's actually go opposite and do tuba instead. Um, we're on a E flat chord. sound too good. This is where a string bass would be nice too. So, uh, I rushed that second and last note right there. Uh, okay, I just want to make sure my quantize is set to a hard quantize like that okay how are we doing let's see bring that over just a little bit legato this Maybe just keep it on the D. No. <laughs> nope. Um, e flat D. There we go. That's it. Yep. Okay. So that sounds good. Let's just do the brass. Oh. That's strange. Usually that uh, doesn't happen. Um, that's a preference setting. It's something to do with the uh, editing and track follows selection. That's that one. And then there was one for the project. Select channel on edit settings. Um, hmm. What is that? Why does it do that? Maybe it always did that, and I'm just crazy. Track selection follows event. So let's untick that for a sec. So if I do this and I do this, nope, still does that. Ah, guys, these are little things that drive me crazy. Let's see. Anyways, um, I'll do... I'll try one more thing, see if that helps. Select enable solo on selected. It's probably this one, enable solo on selected track. So meaning if I do this and this, aha, we got it. Okay, so it would be nice to do a counter melody here. So the melody is, um, Right? So if it's doing that, maybe I'll go da na na. Something like that. Um na na na. I'll just make sure that that might actually sound better. So I'm on the Jaeger trombone. Um, I feel like the Jaeger trombone, going back to this screen. Um, oh, here's a, a cool function on Vienna Sound Pro. There's a little button called MIDI Activity Focus. So if I press that and I start playing, it'll actually go to that. Um, I always uncheck it because it's 
kind of dangerous when you're playing like the whole ensemble. But uh, if you're trying to find something, this is nice. Okay, so you go here. Um, what I wanted to do is bring up the volume on this one because the crossfade on my CC1 stops about halfway, as you can see on the on this uh, little screen here with the contact mod wheel. And as I go past that middle point, then it does the other sample, the other layer. So the, I, I want to keep it here, but there's not a lot of travel room. So that's why I'm boosting up this to six decibels. Um, that's going to help a little bit as we do this one. I can also bring up that guy. Let's write this in. So I'm already there, it looks like. Let's just kind of keep it right there. And now, mod wheel. Or expression map. Right. Um, what am I doing? Right there. Okay, can you go to zero or ish? And then we have to hear the other things, right? So let's add this in. It's really quiet. Maybe bring it up. Yeah, I like that. So far, so good. I, I could probably go higher on this. Hmm, I was thinking about that for a sec. Maybe like that. One. And then, uh, so going, we go. Oh, I can't go any higher. That's... So, um. So instead of that, um, uh, like a, a major third at the end there, uh, let's try. Uh, so. Uh, okay, so
that's a little more inconspicuous. I like that one. Okay, so what do I do? Um, let's re-record the mod wheel. Ooh, that sounded weird. like that and then but I don't these ones need to be um, I mean we could do oh uh, there's no legato is there okay, so let's make sure get rid of the uh, pedals the monophonic stuff overlaps and then let's mess with this let's do staccatissimo This is just rushing in general, so that's probably why it sounds funny. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Um, that note should be louder, like that. Oh yeah, and I forget the the horns are doing a crescendo, right? They're going like wow. So maybe the yeah, because this will repeat, and it needs to come in strong on the next round on that next theme. So let's re record that. So we got right about there, and right about. Okay. And for some reason, it does this where it d doesn't re overwrite. So let's do it again. Yeah, it's really funky. So in those cases, just delete it. Try again. Something like that, right? Let's try again. it a little loud right there all right uh, so drop that down faster bring that up bring it down Okay, so anyways, yeah, I'm, hey, this is coming along, so slow work in progress here. Let's try again. From the beginning. So this part sounds a little buzzy, and again, the crossfades help. Um, I'm, I'm debating if I should even just change the sample there to a different patch. But... I 
mean, it's nice, right? Uh, if if it doesn't poke through as much, so maybe I'll, I'll just re-record the mod build one more time, see if I can get it better. <laughs> That was better to see. Uh, I'm not sure why Cubase is doing this. This is on the new updated um, Cubase 11 Pro 11.03. And I haven't really had to deal with this before. Let, let me see There's something here. Maybe I just have it on the wrong one. Nope. First note played in a new cycle deletes all later notes. Keep last mix that's weird i think something's a little up here it could be the midi tracks and also be an ensemble um pro is maybe the vp side is sending signal delayed so it doesn't overwrite like it should i don't know um see another another con i guess when you're working in this system here but let's try uh, moving on I think horn would be nice, like a little horn solo. So I kept this horn solo here for this one part. Um, I think it'd be nice to add a layer that horn solo with the trombone. Okay, bring this down. Let's hear how that sounds. Okay, let's uh, mute this. Yeah, it sounds really good with horns, huh? Maybe I'll just do a horn solo. I don't think this patch has staccato. Hmm, that's gonna be a problem. With the limitation of this patch, might have to just change the rhythm there. So, da, 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 da. Hmm. Da. maybe just do this. See how that sounds. Sacrifice there. Um, good. All right, so trombone. What to do with you guys? So we got. Um, nice zing at the end okay so yeah that sounds better okay and the last thing for today uh, before closing up shop let's see here um, the beginning is a little empty I mean there's like it just needs something like a sparkly something to uh, help this beginning I, I feel like you know if you listen to John Williams like Olympic fanfares which is what this track is influenced by um, the usually they have like supporting notes also but it's like very inconspicuous so you don't even think about it 
I mean, it could just need some snare drum or just like a little, uh, like a timpani roll, like, uh, let's see here. Um, hmm. Something like that. I'll, I'll play around. Yeah, I think that's what it needs. It just needs something there, right? Uh, so, uh, this one might be easier just to draw in. Let's go out to here about like that. All right, and then let's change this to a roll. Something like that. Delete these guys. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, and it just needs to smooth out, so um let's do this. That That's better. So more CC11, less CC1. So I got that. Um, what happens here? Oh, I see. So I'll bring this up. Okay, and the mod wheel. on this is it oh maybe not uh let's see right here three four yeah maybe just slightly tuck that in no we actually need it up there don't we yeah, I think we're okay. I'll just bring that up on this note. Good, all right, we're almost there. So on these notes, what's, uh, there's something up with it. It's actually the timpani, so not the bass drum. Hmm. Yeah, it's just a little loud. So, yep. Could, so another thing about uh, east-west stuff is there the different velocities trigger different samples too, and I think uh, CC1 does too. So it's it's kind of confusing. 
three, four. All right, and then if I were to do that, one, two, three, and one, two, three, and yeah, let's hear how that sounds. It just it needs that strong sound. Now the kick is uh, poking out a little too much, so let's just bring that down a little bit on both of these guys. Good. Okay, so we have that, and then uh, anything else? Let's see what we can do with the bells. sparkly note there. Sustain pedal, um, even though I said don't use it, <laughs> it works for the bells. So like a lot of keyboard stuff, it works. And then uh, piano, of course. But yeah, the other like orchestral don't use, I highly recommend not using pedal for that. something a little uh hmm on that measure five it's like missing something oh uh, i know just a little sustain sus, uh, i can't talk suspended symbol yeah and it just needs a little Anything else? Um, let's finish it off with like a sparkly wind chime too. Or um, triangle would be nice. Wind chime, pure wind chimes. That's not it. What do I call it? Mark tree. Okay, let's open that up. Turn that guy on. <laughs> Not sure why. So let's boost that volume up as well. So go here. Found you. Okay, so on this end, so you can see what I'm seeing. Okay, so I have this over here. Boost this up a little bit on the output. Let's do that for this one too while we're at it. Oh, it's all the way up. Okay, so I have Mark Tree 1 and Mark Tree 2. Okay. 
going back to this screen. I have that, or, or, something, right? It just needs a, um, also, one more thing. Make sure that my reverb sends are working here. So let's go here. Yes, I do have reverb sends, great low pass or high pass filter there okay anyways hmm. almost uh, sounds better if it's here be a little too loud so <laughs> going back to the screen let's take it down a notch So that's pretty much it. Uh, if I want to orchestrate the sketch over to what I have going on down below, um, I could do string Jaeger or I could do my east west. It might sound better with east west, I think. So let's copy this over. Open the cellos up, perhaps viola. Oh, and I have Vista too. Vista strings would probably be even better however um i don't know I, I do like the options of the key switches and articulations so let, let's stick with the violas first and jaeger i mean in uh, east west we're almost done here just gonna double these guys up and listen to how those sound all right, and then maybe shape them too. Okay, so make sure that these guys are set accordingly. Um, all right, so we got the legatos. I, I think a portamento on some of these would be nice too. Okay, so uh, just on like this one, da, da. Um, this one actually. Okay, bum bum. I feel like all of these should be staccato. Staccato. Oh yeah, and not to mention these uh, I, something I learned today, <laughs> actually, is uh, don't do legato after staccato patches. It just sounds weird. Ready? All right, let's bring these guys up. Um, if you do it like this, then you can do both of these the same way. This should be legato, I mean uh, portamento. Also, so I do have to go in and individually for these ones. Change those out. programming on this part but if you get it right it sounds it sounds good it's just a lot of work here hmm how to get away with that maybe um, I do have these ones I think it's called a 
slur run or something like that. Do I have a slur run? I don't. I thought I did. Let's see. That's cello. This one should have a slur run. I guess not, huh? Maybe that was on the play version, not the opus version. Let's see. Viola. Huh, okay. Interesting. I don't have a slur run. I thought I did. All right, well, what to do? So this sounds kind of funky right here. So I'll just do um, staccato. Okay, I know what's happening. So this needs to be shorter for one. And this needs to be longer. is a little behind. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, it's rushing. Okay, we're pretty much there. Um, yeah. Da, da, da. Huh, that sounds weird. Yeah, something like that. I feel like uh, this is ahead of the beat. Do I have any offsetting going on? I don't, so I'm looking over here. Okay, and then uh, in that case, these need to go louder too. It sounds like uh, it's kind of quiet. I might layer these with this stuff. <laughs> so there's that. Um, let's bring up the cello. And bring up the viola. Okay, let's hear it one more time. So there's uh, that, and then this is the original. Oh, that sounds good to me. Yeah, this needs more shaping too, like with the mod wheel, but. Um, I wonder how Vista would sound. So let me just open up Vista real quick. So we have Vista. And then we have, um, let's just do that. Okay, let's open these guys up. Notice how um, the save times are much faster. As you notice, I, I didn't have to deal with any like wait time for it to save because the files are so small now. So that's a plus. Okay, all right, we're almost there. So we have Let's make sure these are open. Okay. Something is not playing right now. Good. 
That sounds good. Um, let's do that. Got a little rush going on here. Boom. So there's something pushing it. It's probably the bassoon. Ba -na -na, bum -bum. Yeah, that's great. Okay, I think we're ready. So that is all for today, guys. Um, that's uh, a little bit over time than I planned, but that's okay. Uh, usually weekends are good for me uh, for the most part. This is just a, a, a joy to do this live, um, these uh, recordings or these compositions live. If you guys have any benefit to that, please, by all means, um, comment, share with your friends, and subscribe uh, above all else. Uh, that really helps my visibility. Um, pressing that like button really helps too. All, all that uh, good stuff to um, just help support my channel, help uh, get some exposure. And if you want to learn more, please watch all those live streams I've done so far. We're on episode 12. If you want to get uh, more hands-on, one-on-one experience and learning MIDI production, uh, reach out to me at the email in the description below and uh, we can talk and, and come up with a, a plan to help out uh, whatever you need. So that is all for today. I'm going to play this track for you now uh, before I go. Um, this is a work in progress, so it's not done, but so far so good. Here we go. Let's play. Um, well, actually, let me do one thing here. Let's open this. And get rid of that. Okay. Here we go. So that's it. Um, yeah, FW scoring music. Uh, I just barely saw your notes. So before I go, um, I see you use Jaeger. Are you satisfied with the library? I'm pretty interested to buy it, but don't know if it's worth it. If you're looking into a trailer, good trailer all around library, um, I highly recommend Jaeger. Also, with classical stuff, it's pretty useful. So yes, I, I, I would highly recommend Jaeger. I use Jaeger all the time, and I layer it. it it's very smooth and buttery for uh, its lower layered uh, mod wheel thing. And then if you go up to the higher mod wheel for the second layer, um, it's, uh, a lot of the sounds are perfect for the trailer stuff. So it, it is a good library. Um, I would say it is on the pricier side, so if you can wait for a sale, which I did last year for Christmas, um, they sometimes will have a sale around that time. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. In the meantime, uh, thanks for watching. For everyone who uh, participated, thank you again for uh, coming on board and, and shouting out. Um, I will see you guys next time. Bye.